Welcome in to the Brandon Lowe Show with Ryan Pritt with Jack Withrow minus Brandon Lowe and plus Grant Trailer today. I'm Ryan Pritt. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wants to show up. Yeah. It's just become the uh, the, the podcast um, with three dudes from some, some companies that have some part of this show now. So... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be back. I missed Friday, right? Had a little yeah. bit of a situation we can talk about here in a little bit. Yeah, maybe. that was interesting. Yeah. Um, had a water rescue in front of my house from my father, but hey, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> we got that. We got Grant Trailer beside me. It looks like, you know, Jack, when, when there's those real life depictions of somebody and they get an actor that's just way better looking than the guy they're portraying. This is what this looks like over here. <laughs> Boom. Right here. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. It's crazy. <laughs> What's up, Grant? Hey, nothing. Nothing. It's good to be here. Uh, obviously, love being with you guys, too, and, and talking sports. And just an exciting time of year. You know, yeah. the weather's getting better. Sports are getting good. So, a lot of fun. Jack doesn't want to hear about weather getting better. Neither do I. Jack was stuck in Glenville till <laughs> 3 o'clock in the morning last night, right? It was rough. <laughs> yeah, Mountain East Conference uh, track and field championships. Um the first day is always a long day because you have the decathletes out there and the heptathlon, decathlon. Sorry if I mumble my words this morning, but uh, he's yeah, dragging it was a little after bit. midnight. Should have gave him one of these monsters. Very true. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, we had that going, and it was just a long day. Of course, I was up there for two days with video productions at the Mountain East. We're doing their championships now, and so got to the last event which the last two events of the 10,000k for women and 10,000k for men so they run the women's and the men get out on the starting line they call for the starter he walks out the tent and immediately walks right back in <laughs> of course they have radar systems you know uh, beyond my knowledge uh, but they can pinpoint lightning and so they had lightning in the area so it was a two-hour delay. It was originally supposed to go off for 7.55 or 7.45. And it finally went off at 9.55 last night for the uh, 10K for the men. And they, they for run one that. event. Yeah. And that's in Glenville. Yeah, in Glenville. So I'm sitting in Glenville. <laughs> mm. And I get a text from my wife, dinner's ready like it. <laughs> 7.30, I'm like. But I never did see it because I didn't. But. <laughs> Hope you yeah, in the downtime, I saw it. I'm like, I don't think it's I'm gonna in make foil it. in the refrigerator yeah. when we get back yeah. with a note that said, "I I tried really hard." <laughs> the note that says like, blankets <laughs> on the couch. Don't wake me up. Yeah, exactly. So a long day. I had my brush with weather Saturday. The MSAC softball tournament was just yeah. awesome. Has people who probably Speaking live weather, within a mile or two here. Right here. Yeah, Spencer would have helped us Saturday. Hanging out with us. That was a. Never, it's never goes to courting. And then I, <laughs> I love that Luke uh, Creasy, who uh, works at the HD now, the Marshall writer, is is he's like <laughs> retweeting my tweets, like, man, this poor guy. And then I look up and he's in a 24 to was, 4 baseball game. Wow. And not only that, but it was a four hour delay for a 25 yeah. to 4 baseball <laughs> yeah, game. 25 yeah. to 4. Charlotte hits eight home runs in the game. <laughs> like, wow. It was not a good week. Yeah. It was, I was going to say, I mean, Ryan, with you. Which one was more weird, Friday or Saturday? Because, like, you and I, I mean, you Friday. had a wild week. I was telling Luke that whenever he and I talked on the phone. I was like, listen, Pritz had a 24-hour <laughs> stretch that I don't envy whatsoever. So, Friday was just terrifying, and I'll tell a story real quick. But first, uh, we will have Marshall catcher Katie Adams here in just a few. Uh, public speaker extraordinaire, the, the, maybe the worst base runner in the history of her in high school, and we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> Um, Friday, I'm, I'm ready to come in, man. I'm, I'm in the shower, you know, we're going to, we're going to be on the show. Brandon's here and you're here and we have no guests. So we're just going to kick it, shoot it yeah. for a while, you know, and I'm ready to go. I'm going to step out of my shower and my phone just happens to be buzzing while I'm standing there, butt naked as, uh, Neil Brown would say, How you do the shower thing. Naked. <laughs> and, uh, it's my dad. And I'm like, Hey man, I got him on speaker. He's like, Hey, I, uh, I need you to come get me. I said, uh, Okay, where are you at? To the boat ramp. Now, Grant will tell you, having been to my house, that's about what 100 yards, not 50 yards. Yeah, not far at all. Yeah. So I'm like, well, what do you What do you mean? I I need to come get you. Why don't you just drive down here? Well, I'm in the back of an ambulance. Okay, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on, so I get out of the shower and I throw some clothes on and I drive down the street and there's three fire trucks. 
the nitro fire department's there polka's there there's an ambulance parked down by where the boats go in the water and i'm like what the hell's going on so i run down there and i'm like hey what happened and he's like oh you're uh are, are you his kid i was like yeah he's like yeah he said you were gonna come get him um his boat sank i said what he said yeah he was out kayaking and it sank I said he just got it said, i know look out there and you look out in the river and sure enough they're towing my dad's <laughs> kayak down the middle of the canal river like from a half mile down i mean it was and uh so i finally get to him and he's like trying to like basically fight the ambulance people to get out of there because that's you know what that's like you know tell, yeah tell us old dudes, dude. yeah yeah i'd probably be the same way and <clears throat> well as the story goes uh he had just gotten a kayak from dick's yeah, I'm gonna throw this company under the bus today. So they don't sponsor us, right? Oh. They charge too. They, <laughs> they don't now. They charge too much for stuff anyway. Um, and apparently, this kayak had a huge gash on the bottom of it. So he, without, I mean, you're not gonna flip your kayak over, you know, and look. At, I mean, you're, yeah. you're just gonna roll it out and, and go, assuming that it's never been used. So he goes from the polka side of the canal to the Winfield side and is fishing the opposite bank. Notice it's getting a little wobbly. Turns around and makes it to about the middle before the nose just plunges under the river. And he is <laughs> clutching a kayak for dear life and said he he was treading water for 30, 40, 50 minutes. He didn't know, but really? somebody finally drove by on 62 up above the boat ramp and just happened to look out and see him floating there. He <laughs> was like, hey, do you need help? He's like, yeah. So they call 911, and by the time 911 got there, he was actually in front of my house. He was like, the only thing I was hoping is that you would just look out your window. And I'm like, oh, my God, if this would have this would have went wrong, how bad would I have felt for the rest of my life? Just knowing yeah. I could have looked out. But you know, thank God, you know, 15 minutes after we got him out of there, a barge went up the river. So if that guy, if that happens while you're out there, you're gone. And uh, got him to my house. And when we got him there, we got a thermometer, and his temperature didn't even register. It was one of the digital ones. So it was under 92 degrees. And a uh, few hours, some sweaters, long underwear, portable heater, some hand warmers later, we got him back, and he's ready to go again. So it's an unbelievable story, but he's he's Crazy. got a lawsuit, I think. <laughs> they lost all of his fishing poles, his fishing tackle, his boots, everything. So. Yeah. And that's what he's going to be the most mad about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole well, thing. That's what he, I was like, why didn't you just swim to shore? And he said, well, first, I was holding on to that kayak because I paid 4000 bucks for it. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, and second, by the time I treaded water for five minutes and it was cold as it was, like, my muscles were locked and couldn't I couldn't move. have made it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, man, well, do you think he was going to go? He's like, yeah, I thought I was going to die. I was like, oh, that's pretty terrifying. So he, life, I, he did have a life vest, though, right? He bought it the day before, was not going to wear it. And decided at the last second to put it on. Yeah. So, key key thing there, guys. Wear your wear your life jackets. Yeah. And maybe the first time you try a kayak, put it on a pond, <laughs> or turn it upside down. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Inspect it. it. Yeah. Just you know, do kick something. The tires. Yeah. Just don't put it on the biggest <laughs> river in the state. Just right out of the gate. Um, but now we're all. It's something I'll be giving him hell about for the next twenty years now, and I'm glad that it worked out that way for sure. But. I mean, you were. I was texting you guys at eleven. Like, hey, yeah. I'm, hold on a second. I gotta go check on check something. Check my dad first. I gotta make sure my dad doesn't have hyperthermia. So that's why I wasn't here Friday. Well, but. it's it's one of those deals where he calls me and like I'm trying to figure out schedules for the day. And and I think I was on my way to Marshall Softball to cover them at one. And he calls me and he's like, Hey, I might have to call off today. And he <laughs> sounded like it was like an uncertain type deal. And I was like, Oh. Okay, that's cool. You know what's going on. He he told me the story, and I was like, "Why are we talking about work right now? Like, yeah. like I'm not worried about. I think it was Logan and Winfield yeah. softball or something they had. It's like, listen, man, that's not like <laughs> the best part. What I get, did you just go through? Like, I can't believe it. I get down there, and SS or uh, WCHS and WOWK are standing up there filming, and I'm like, I <laughs> get in the back of the ambulance. And if you know my dad, he's he's a pretty shy guy. He's not. I'm like, Dad, come on, man. we got to go up here and do these interviews. He's like, the hell we do? <laughs> and we get home, and it's noon, and I turn the TV on, and there it is. Like, the lead yeah. story and, on the noon news. And that's the moment that he was talking to me on the phone. He's like, well, hell, we're famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Pretty wild. It was everything little, worked yeah. out so well, though. Yeah, I mean, man, it, it could have been so much worse. It's great that we can sit here and joke about it. He's actually in South Carolina now, driving to Florida, where I will be flying out to tonight. So More fishy. 
Yeah, we're not going to put any kayaks in the ocean. <laughs> we're just going to do it from the rocks, I think. So hopefully, hopefully everything can go according to plan this week. But yeah, going to take a few where, days. Where do you guys go down there in Florida? Uh, we're going to St. Pete okay. this week, and then we'll be making a trip to Orange Beach in July, which is Alabama, right there next to what's that, Pensacola, I think. So if you're going to St. Pete, Columbia Restaurant, oh, it's the best. Mar- Marshall played in like. I don't know, six St. Pete Bowls in like eight years or something like that. I felt like I was there every single year, and I feel, like, I feel like I know that place better than – I mean, they went through three different sponsorships with Marshall in that nice little stretch of – it was bad boy mowers. It was it was all sorts of stuff. The city of St. Pete. So. That's the best thing about traveling with him for work. You can go to Russia, and he'll be like, dude, there's a restaurant, okay, right there on the corner of whatever, and dude – it's the best food you'll eat, man. Uh, I'm a 400 pound guy and a 200 pound body, and I don't, I don't know why. I was yeah. you would I never was, tell looking at us. I eat a quarter of much as he does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I get huge, and he just walks around like, okay, I need to eat again. We, lunch was an hour ago. I'm like, dude, I'm not eating till next week. What are you talking yeah. about? So, I love me some food. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, it's about that time. You want to let's take, take a break. break here, bring yep. Katie on, and. And see what she's got to say for a little while. Yep. Let's do it. We'll do it. We'll be back. All right. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Brandon Lowe with Ryan Pritt with Grant Trailer with Jack Withrow with No Brandon Lowe Show. Is that better that time? I'm, I'm just working on how I can say it. You nailed it. All right, cool. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> that was right in a row. It's almost like I was rehearsing that. That's how good I am. Uh, I got I to gotta make a new graphic now. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, joined today by Marshall Catcher, two-time State Player of the Year, public speaking extraordinaire, oh. one of the worst base runners I've ever seen. This is Katie Adams. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you, Katie? You're never going to let me live that down. Well, I had to bring it up because literally I was covering a game in Hurricane the other day, and I was talking to Megan right after a tough loss. And she said, you know, if you look out on those signs out there, you you won't see an undefeated season. And I said, yeah, because Katie Adams doesn't know how to tag yeah. up at first base, right? I know. I'm all, I got so excited. <laughs> every every bit of softball knowledge that I had went out the window. <laughs> yeah, that's always going to be the one blemish that uh, gets to look out in the outfield and see. But uh, it worked out for us. Yeah, I think I it worked say, out. How many, no one wants how to see many that wins? Me, right? How many wins did you help produce in your four years at Hurricane? And the one, t- the one <laughs> thing Listen, that this- I, I don't know about the how many wins, but I know about exactly how many losses. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as I'm around, you're never going to forget it's that. Always that one, one uh, time. And the public speaking, and that uh, listen, the public speaking things on you. <laughs> hey, that that dinner was yesterday, by the way. I thought about signing oh, you up to come in and like so keynote speak. <laughs> Well, it was funny. After our senior day, we had a, a social with our parents and the coaches at Fat Patties, and Coach Smith walks up to me, and she said, you know, uh, we're going to let you all get up and speak for a minute um, if you all want to. <laughs> and my mom even looked at me, and she said, this is just like the uh, dinner again, all over again. I like, no. <laughs> for those that don't know, i got to give a little preface on those stories. Katie was the two-time state player of the year, and as part of that, you appear at the Victory Awards dinner where I introduced her, but she did not know she had to give an acceptance speech, and we didn't tell her until she had to go do it. So she was uh, – I, I think you didn't talk to me for about six months after that. Is that right? Yeah, you know, and then I get a text. Uh, you, you come into the next uh, next year's dinner? I, I think I'm busy that day, right? Uh, <laughs> and then the first story – this is what, what what year was it, Katie? What year was 37? Uh, that would have been my uh, my senior year, so 2017. 17. Hurricanes undefeated. They're playing at home. They're in a 2-2 game, seventh inning, bases loaded. Literally the fastest kid who's ever played softball in the state of West Virginia standing on third base. Is that is that pretty accurate, would you say, Katie? Well, see, the thing is that Kirsten also took off. If you watch the video back, she oh. takes off like it's, like it's two outs to, as well. Okay. Well, and... I'm just the one that ended up getting double. <laughs> so you got Kirsten Landers, who I'm not kidding, probably is the fastest player in the history of the state, standing on third oh, base. Yeah. Base is loaded. Katie's on first, and was it Scruggs that hit a fly ball to center field? Yeah, yeah, I, th- yeah. I think senior year it went Kirsten, Jamie, me, Paige. Yeah, so, so, so Scruggs she probably would have been up to bat. Yeah, Scruggs lifts a fly ball in the outfield. It's caught. 
This is the easiest sack fly that I mean Kirsten Landers could run backwards home that fast. I could have just sat down on first yeah. base and we would have won the game. And Katie's running off of first base like yep. like there's two outs and so the outfielder throws back to first and, and doubles her off before Landers I'm not the scores. Person. And then I'm uh, it, <laughs> probably one of the slowest players in West Virginia softball history. And then it goes to extras and Huntington throws a three spot and Josh Caldwell goes scorched earth on his team for about twenty minutes, so that, yeah, uh, that was a tough one. Yeah, there there are way more play, way, way more highlights in this career than yeah, highlights. Let's, yeah, let's, let's not just talk. Let's talk about the, uh, the winning the states. Like, I was going to say. That one <laughs> I was going to say. I, I seem to remember that you delayed a couple softball games by hitting bombs onto the field at uh, okay. at Vienna. So you know, yeah, yeah, but it, that never gets talked about now. It's, oh, like, yeah, it's no, always no, the time. No, no. We're getting to that. Not, we're not gonna, to lose. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about that now. Let's start. Now with with where you're at now though, pretty good season for the herd down there. Um, and uh, would you guys finish your regular season? You got one more series, is that right? Yeah. So we go to North Texas this upcoming week to finish our regular season. Um, and luckily with the travel, uh, that's where the conference tournament is being held, so we can just stay in Texas uh, for you know, so we don't have to fly back, and you know, it's not going to be as rough of travel. We'll already be there. Um, but, yeah, we'll finish up at North Texas, and then the conference tournament will start Wednesday. So 32-14, and 14, and what, 20-1 and one at home, is that right? Yeah, yep. Uh, only loss coming on senior day this past Saturday, but. <laughs> That's your senior uh, day, too, right? Yep. yep. Uh, <sighs> Katie, you just, <laughs> you went 20. Five years, they're finally kicking me out. <laughs> Well, talk a little bit about the season and what you guys have been able to do, especially at home. That's a hell of a mark, even even with the one loss there. Yeah, I think we set the record for uh, highest win percentage at home. Um, I mean, playing at the dot, having our own fans, it's like we just feed off of our fans at the dot. I mean, we have we have a great crowd that comes out. I mean, not just parents, but people in the community that come out and support us every weekend. Um, I think that has a lot to do with, you know, our success that we've had at home. And just all season, we've, you know, we're working together as a team. You know, everyone enjoys being around each other. We've had fun all season, um, and I think that definitely has helped with um, with the success we've had so so far. Well, Katie, you mentioned that that series coming up this week. There's no bigger series in Conference USA softball this year than what's coming up this weekend. You all are are locked in a tight battle for first place. North Texas is the number one seed in the West, and it looks like they've got that locked up. How big was yesterday? And you, you all sort of struggled a little bit. I mean, offensively, you all were trying to find it. It's like the, the first game and a half of the Western Kentucky series was electric, and you all had it. And then for two or three games, it seemed like everybody was struggling. Yesterday, five home runs in the first three innings and a 13-2 to two win. How big was yesterday going into North Texas this weekend? Oh, it was definitely good to just get back on track. I mean, our offense had definitely struggled. I mean – even in the first two games of the series against UTEP, we only scored four runs, which is, you know, really uncharacteristic of our offense. So it was good to just, you know, get back to ourselves before we head into that big series at North Texas. I mean, I don't think in the past years that I've been here, there's never been this close of a race for first place um, with us being tied with WKU. Um, it's kind of leaving it like up to, you know, how our series goes with North Texas and uh, what happens you know, in other series that are going on. So it's exciting for sure. Obviously, you're not trying to look past this series, but that tournament is obviously going to determine, I think, postseason fates for the most part probably. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. How do you how do you prepare? How do you get ready for that? And no matter what happens against North Texas, it's going to be obviously pivotal, that tournament. And is it easier almost knowing you got to win it to get in? Or, or, you know, does it make it tougher? How do you kind of deal with all that? Yeah, I mean, we – we should be in the tournament already. Like, I'm, I don't know how the numbers work out, but, I mean, this series, just for seeding for the tournament, it's huge because if you're one of uh, the number one or number two seed, then you don't have to play until the second day of the tournament, which starts double elimination. So, I mean, it's huge to get, you know, a good seeding, and um, it just sets you up to be in a better spot for the tournament. Um, but we'll just have to see how it all pans out for sure. When, when you look at this season – and what you all have been through. I mean, you know, you seniors have been through a ton. You look at the COVID year and, and that shutting down a year in which you started out much like this year, started out red hot, 
Uh, how difficult has it been to come back from COVID and sort of get your legs and, and everybody getting back into a rhythm and, and resume normalcy, considering that for the better part of a year and a half, it, it was, you know, even workouts and, and the schedule. People don't understand that side of a student athlete, do they? Like everything was so flipped upside down for so long. It, it's sort of like this is just now when you're getting your legs back and getting back to normal. For sure. I mean, this is the first full season we've been able to play since 2019. I mean, obviously the year got cut short in 2019 when COVID started, but even last year uh, we had, I mean, it was the first year we've ever opened up at home just because we kept, you know, having COVID pop up and having to cancel games. You know, we didn't play near as many games as, you know, we should have last year. Um, And it's just hard to get on a roll. I mean, you don't know, uh, you know, who's going to be available this weekend if we have a COVID outbreak and, you know, we can't use our locker rooms where it's hard to, you know, just kind of be around your team. You have to wear masks, workouts are different, everything's different. So I think this year it's, it's the first, I mean, normal year we've had and just being able to get on a roll and like, you know, be able to play the 40 plus games that we play and not have to worry about as many cancellations or, you know, different travel restrictions. Um, it's been great to finally, you know, have some normalcy again. Yeah, shift gears a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> one of your former teammates is now a coach in high school. Were you aware of this? Oh, yeah, Mathis. <laughs> Big country. Oh, yeah. And and doing quite well. I mean, they're the, the top seed in what's arguably one of the toughest sections in the state. And um, I got to see her coach against Megan, which was, was kind of fun and surreal. But yeah. um, how much do you keep up? with teammates with with that kind of stuff and what's the chances we see you coaching someday soon uh you know me and megan have talked definitely talked about it because uh next i'll be finishing up my second degree next year um so i'll have some time on my hands if i you know if i do decide to uh, coach a little bit but no with mathis i think it's just crazy to think back um when we were in high school nitro was not a top you know top tier program in west virginia i mean in double a they were you know, winning maybe 10 games a season. And now to see, obviously, she has her little sister and, like, you know, a lot of talent in there now. But seeing what she's been able to do with, uh, you know, the Nitro team, it's, it's pretty crazy to see. Um, I just I just still look at her as, you know, the sophomore when I was a senior, and, you know, now she's ahead of the program. Um, I'm really happy for her. That makes me feel ancient. <laughs> <laughs> like there have been so many moments this year. Like you're all senior day, Katie. I was like, God, I'm old. Like my daughter's a freshman. You all are graduating. Mathis is a coach. Jack, Jack no, just like, looked at me like your daughter's a freshman. <laughs> yes, she's a she's a freshman yeah. at Ashland. I got a, I got to see uh, Katie coaching in the Tri State Showcase a few weeks ago, and it's just like this is 22 years of doing this stuff, and it just it feels yeah. like it just started yesterday. It's crazy. I tell you what. And the funny thing to think about is Kirsten, who's, you know, older than Katie Mathis, she still has uh, three years of eligibility with everything yeah. that she's been through. Um, so it's going to be a long time before Kirsten, you know, uh, gets out. And, and we're happy to see that she's, you know, finally healthy-ish, going to get on the right track again. But, yeah, we, we keep in touch a lot. Um, me, Jamie, Kirsten, Mathis, Scruggs, Lindsey Ferris. And Tori Green, we still have a group message. We talk in um, every week, maybe even every uh, every day. So yeah, we definitely keep in touch, um, seeing how everyone else's season's going. And um, then you have Mathis, who's about to get married and is coaching. So she's on a lot different track than we are right now. But, yeah, we definitely keep in touch. I didn't know she was about to get it. That part of it, yeah. yeah. She's engaged. She'll be, I think she's mar- getting married either this summer or fall, I believe. I tell you, I tell you the funniest part and you'll remember this is back when you guys were playing she was the last kid i wanted to interview she hated it like hated she hated it she hated it like you hate public speaking (laughs) right like yeah couldn't stand it and she just always seemed quiet but i tell you katie they were playing um let's see it was a sissonville down in nitro and they made three errors in one inning and they finally get the third out and Mathis comes storming out of the dugout, just ripping <laughs> into that team. And I thought, you know what? She's going to make it. Like, I didn't uh-huh. know she had that in her. And it was oh, yeah. it was, oh, uh, yeah. it was pretty impressive. And then they scored like seven the next inning and won the game. So she's um, she's legit, man. She's doing good stuff down there. So yeah. Speaking of all this, Katie, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, 
if I can get HD Media to sponsor a co-ed softball team, can I just bring that that 2017 team of you all down and, <laughs> and just not really tell anybody and us just, you know, print and I'll sit back and <laughs> we'll manage, you know, drink monster I'm and, down and things for like it. that. I, I can kind of rally all the beverages. Well, the one thing that is happening, and I'm going to have to borrow your dad this summer because yeah. the Mathis versus Pritt home run derby is happening this summer. Uh-oh. How bad do you... I don't think you want my dad throwing to Katie Mathis, though. I mean, I'm going to beat Katie. I mean, come on. I, I'm just saying he's thrown her enough uh, batting practice, you know. That is the true. Year. Maybe I'll have Grant. Maybe I'll have your dad throw to me, and Grant can throw to Katie. Well, Katie won't hit anything if I'm throwing to her because <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, I, that's. Yeah, that would not work out well. We might have to live stream that. No, we're going oh, we to. Are. Jack's we calling are. it. Yeah. Jack and Brandon are announcing it. I might have to get it. on the action. Yeah, yeah. yeah Katie, you need do. to come up and get in on the action. Katie might, Katie's been out of the game. I think she's probably just only hitting fungo these well, days. That, yeah, yeah, that's what. She's got warning track power now. I'm yeah. not worried about that. All uh, I do is hit bombs. Shots we need, fired. We need to do a celebrity <laughs> home run derby. Get sponsors. Make it an all-day event. Yeah, this has Let's been a, this has been a year-long plan, and Katie's already in. We do it the weekend before the state tournament. Well, if not. Nitra's in the state tournament. That's not good. I'm not going to do that to her if they're in. So we'll have to see. But, hey, Katie, while we got you, we'll end with this. I know, um, like you said, you had senior day and, and all that, and you're working on a second degree. What, what What's next for you? What, what do you got uh, degree-wise, and, and what are you looking to do when this all ends? Yeah, so I graduated with my uh, exercise science degree this semester, and I am double majoring and getting a second degree in psychology. Uh, I plan to get a master's in psych after uh, I finish the degree and become a sports psychologist. Um, you will make yeah. tons in this area because there are so many head cases <laughs> running around this area right now <laughs> well, in sports. I was even talking to my dad about it, and, you know, he's happy that I finally, you know, it was a long, long time before I figured out what I wanted to do. And I told him, I said, I know that, when I was in middle school, if I was going through a slump or if I was having some issues, I know that you would have been paying for me to go and see a sports psychologist <laughs> if there was one in the Valley. So, um, he said, yeah, I'm excited. And especially with everything going on with, um, you know, student athletes and mental health, like it's, it's a good, it's a good field to go into right now. And, you know, be able to stay around athletics and help, you know, people go into the same things that, you know, I've been able to experience through my five years of college athletics. Um, I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing and I think that was uh one of the biggest things when I was trying to figure out what to do with my life I had five years of college to try to figure it out and I just now figured it out in my fifth year so um yeah I'm excited yeah plus you can just Seriously look excited for the next step plus you can you can just look at a client and be like look I mean, I made the worst base running blunder in the history of softball. I mean, if I can overcome that and have the success I've had, look what you can do, you know? Yeah, we could have had that 30, what was it, like 38 or 39 and 0, but, or 30, I don't remember how many it was, but, oh, I think it's 39 and 1, 36 and 1, it's 37 like and 1. 37 and 1? Yeah, that's tough. But so you can tell he's yeah. been sitting on this for a while because he's, he's got it ingrained hey, in his brain. You, she'll tell you. I bring this up every time I see her. I have to. Yeah. It's an obligation yeah. at this point. So. Uh, Cameron, see, Cameron Mahalis is on, you know, at Marshall now. Oh, yeah. And we talk about it every once in a while because uh, she was the one that told me uh, that K or Kirsten took off because I did not watch a, a little, even a bit of film from that game. I wanted to erase that from him as fast as possible. But she was like, you know, Kirsten took off too. And I said, yeah, but Kirsten could have realized her mistake, went back and tagged up and still scored. Yeah. 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 By the time that I, you know. Yeah, you didn't have that luxury, unfortunately. No, I, I did not have that luxury at all. Well, being slower than Kirsten Landers is nothing to be embarrassed about. Yeah, no, yeah. I will say this, and I know that uh, you know the loss on Saturday was a tough one for everybody, but it did bring me back to another parallel too. That uh, the last time there was a Marshall team that was going through an undefeated stretch like what you all were, and then suffered a loss on Senior Day, uh, 2014 Marshall football, and those guys went on to win a CUSA championship. So. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, history repeats itself here at Marshall. There you go. So. Just, just, a little, yeah. just a little something, a little uh, silver lining at the end of that for you all. But uh, it's been a lot of fun covering you all this year. I think the most impressive thing for me has been that 
there hasn't been enough seating for your all's fans this year. I mean, every time I've gone to a game, and, and there were some 40-degree games that were miserable that I was up in the box with Scott Hall and looking down, and, and even through those. I mean, the, the amount of support that you all have drawn for softball it really shows the, the love for softball in this state and uh, the success that you all have had. So, so kudos for that, and congratulations on a great career at Marshall. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. it. And I think they do have plans, especially entering the Sun Belt. And I mean, there's going to be improvements to facilities all over Marshall with this jump to a different conference. So I know they have some plans to improve uh, the softball field. I know they're talking about getting like a new scoreboard and video board and more seating. And with the warehouse coming down uh, behind the field, I'm sure that's going to open up some more opportunity to, to have uh, some improvements done. So, yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> and you know, I kid, you know, I kid with you because I care about you, Katie. So we're all we're all rooting for you guys, and we'll all be watching as uh, as Marshall travels to the West to take on North Texas, and then uh, goes into the Conference USA tournament. So best of luck. Appreciate you calling in. Always fun. And um, hey, if you uh, pick up a coaching job, let one of us know, and we'll we'll come out and and hang out for a while. For sure, for uh-huh. sure. Maybe catch me at Hurricane next year. You never know. And I'm going to catch you this summer when I'm whooping Mathis' rear end. I want, I want that. Yeah, because he's going to need therapy. Yeah. 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 You'll, 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 you'll have I'm to gonna, coach I'm him through that. Therapy. Give me experience and I'll be able to help you through that loss. I, I'm, I'm going to need the therapy that's going on behind us. Yeah, no, exactly. It won't be psychological. Exactly. It'll be me not being able to you'll walk for three days. Yeah, so Physical <laughs> and mental. He's going to be sore. Listen, you not, have you not been on the golf course, Ryan? <laughs> it's, uh, Grant will tell you, it's never pretty out there either. Oh, yeah. man, it's never pretty. And he's still whipping my hind end by 10 oh, strokes man. around. So. Yeah, no. I mean, I that's, that's my next plan. I got to find something to do. So Golf. Hey, you take up golf <laughs> and uh, you, we'll you give Grant and I a call and we'll come show you how not to play the game and it'll, we'll have a good time. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got two hats teaching. So. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming on, Katie, and uh, we will talk soon. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye bye. See you. Bye. And that's Katie Adams. Always a great good time. kid. Oh, my God. Always so much fun. <clears throat> She knew I was coming with that hammer, though. <laughs> she had to. Every time I see her, it's the first thing I talk about. So, you want to take a break, and we'll come yep, back and we'll take a break and figure out what's going on elsewhere. Okay, there you go. We'll All be right. right back. Be right. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Jack Withrow Show with Grant Trailer and Ryan Pritt without Brandon Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prime. keeping it fresh oh, every man. time. I was gonna say Brandon's already not feeling well. He's back there like he's just writing me out of this thing. The only, right thing, the only thing we know it's a broadcast. That's all. That's the only thing. I think the first time we called, we were on here and Brandon called it the broadcast, and now that that stuck. So. That's where we're prod. Because prod's a funny word. That's when you're going like, with radio prod. I don't know. I don't know. Turn up the video. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, for a minute, let's uh, touch on the Marshall baseball thing we brought up on off air. That, uh, yeah. while we got this guy to the right, you know, might as well use him a little bit here. So uh, what's going on on that front, Grant? Fill us in. Well, I know that everybody in uh, Huntington has heard this for uh, 50 years. I mean, <laughs> but there is going to be a baseball stadium coming to Huntington. Um Christian Spears, who is Marshall's athletic director, has has really made that a focal point. He's talked about it uh, on numerous occasions, had meeting after meeting after meeting. Like that is his number one goal right now is to you know not only help Marshall get to the Sun Belt Conference and and make a successful transition there, but the baseball stadium. I mean, he the first week that he took over as athletic director. Within a seven-day span, Marshall had two games at the YMCA Kennedy Center field that were suspended due to darkness because they don't have lights at a Division One facility. And he just flat out, he, he speaks his mind. He said, that's embarrassing. Like, we cannot have that as a university, and we will not have that as a university. And so um, I do not believe that that stadium will be built where the plans that were set forth a couple years ago um, – you know, originally Fifth stayed on Fifth Avenue. I think that that's going to go in behind Marshall softball field at some point. I don't know that 100%, but uh, there's some logistical issues with the grounds there at Fifth Avenue. And, and, you know, the way that that's structured, that would be such a tight fit that you couldn't build around the stadium. And what they want to do is they not only want to have baseball, they want to make that an event site. They want to be yeah. able to, 
you know, potentially host concerts and host events there in the future. And if they're going to prep state tournament, you know, very, very easily could host a, a prep state tournament or even, you know, maybe build some smaller fields around it and sort of what like Barbersville and Shawnee have done, uh, turn youth, you know, help youth sports out. Yeah. Marshall wouldn't be over that portion of it, but there's plenty of land back behind Marshall softball field. For those that have been there, it goes all the way to the river. Um, you know, and there's some logistical things, but they want that to be on campus. But the Fifth Avenue site would be, I mean, there's a lot of logistical issues. I think there's a water main that runs underneath that property that, that not only serves West Virginia, but also Ohio and Kentucky. So there'd be a lot of, you know, tape that would have to, you know, you'd have to go through to get that ready for a baseball stadium. And the fact of the matter is that they want this thing by 2024. And that's something that Christian Spears has told me, you know, out of his own mouth. He said, yeah, you know, we've got to bump this thing up. So I do expect within, I, I believe the athletics committee meets in June is their next meeting. Nothing was announced this past week, week and a half. But from what I hear, I, I would expect some more news in June as far as the logistics for the, the baseball stadium and the next step forward. But he's being very aggressive. And, and the thing that uh, that impresses me about Christian Spears is, He's a sports version of Brad Smith, who took over as Marshall University president. Big energy guy, big dreams, and just tireless workers. I mean, you know, I, I've talked to him on several occasions where he's been, you know, on the road back and forth, going to meet with donors and things like that. And, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, today I've, I've been at it and we'll, we'll have a 17-hour day and then we'll get up and, and do it again tomorrow. And, and that's – if you're going to make it a Marshall with – the state of Division One athletics now, that's what's going to be necessary to yeah. make them make the next step with the Sun Belt. But yeah. he, he sort of determined, you know, okay, people say we can't do this. People say we're not going to do this. Fine. We'll show them that we're going to do this. So it's really exciting to see and, and kind of refreshing to see in Huntington. Yeah, you got to have somebody in that position that's aggressive for, for one and that can think outside of the box because you got to be creative. Yeah, and he that 100%, him and Brad Smith both are on the same wavelength with that. And I, I think that, you know, Marshall made a very good hire. And I have all the respect in the world for Jeff O'Malley. Like, I've, yeah. I've known that guy since I started in this business, and a lot of Marshall people weren't necessarily thrilled whenever they went outside to, to bring somebody in. But um, those two working together because of O'Malley's knowledge of Marshall University, of the landscape of Huntington, you know, the field that he's gotten for the university, plus Christian Spears, an outside-the-box thinker that's, you know, going to produce money and, and sort of, you know, he's not afraid to spend money, too. You know, he knows that it's going to cost some things, but he's not afraid to do that and instead of, you know, counting costs and things like that. So uh, it's going to be very exciting over the next few months to see, like Katie was talking, I mean, even the softball field, the softball field is not old. I mean, I think that it's, what, a decade maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, I think 2013 is when it opened, and already they're looking at its expansion and, and doing some upgrades there. So that's, that's you know, the generality is that Marshall is going to vastly improve its facilities over the next little bit to get ready for the Sun Belt so they can be a top-tiered team in the Sun Belt. Yeah, we had uh, Coach Huff on a couple of weeks ago, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's important. <laughs> I'm talking about the baseball yeah, stadium. Yeah, that's one of the things he brought when up. He, he brought it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and that, I mean, that's another facility. Like, if you're a football recruit and you come to Marshall and there's baseball players, you know, taking ground balls on yeah. the turf there, yeah. and, and they don't do that necessarily as much anymore, but they used to do that because, you know, George Smales Field, if there was rain or something like that. Um, if you're a football player and you see baseball players out on your turf, you know, taking ground balls, things like that, you know, that, that might be a little bit of a turnoff. So, you know, Charles Huff gets it that, you know, all sports need to be at tip-top shape to be able to recruit, especially against the Sun Belt, because yeah. there's some talent-rich areas yep. that they're going to be going against. You yep. look at Myrtle Beach, you look at Louisiana yep. and Mississippi and those areas, they're going to have to step their game up to be successful. Otherwise, it's going to be a long four or five years for Marshall. So they're, they're actively getting after it, and that starts with the baseball facility. Yeah, as a baseball guy that I am, I'm excited I mean, for just Sun look Belt at him. Marshall. I'm wearing that baseball shirt today, isn't he? I like I, that. I, I like it's that. It's a good-looking shirt. It you, is. You guys weren't here, but off I got my A. got my umpire hat on. <laughs> that'll be a, you know, that'll be my poll. That I always run like a weird poll. What was it last week that I said after the – oh, what? Uh, did you or did you not turn your air conditioner on this weekend? Oh, yeah. Me? I wasn't home. This, this is this week, so week's, guys. Do you or do you not rock short-sleeve hoodies? I mean – 
I know well, both of you got we, one. We got them on this. This poll's going to be a 66% yes. <laughs> I, I'm not saying, no, I'm pulling the Twitter people. I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just asking. Because I, I, hey, when it's, I not when it's one, given to me for free, yes. That's a whole other. Yeah, but see, that doesn't <laughs> hey, even count on the poll because I, I wear it. But I've bought, I bought some of those. I love before. them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So comfortable because. I, again, I'm not comfy. saying it's wrong. Yeah, I just be comfy. I don't it's, have any. It's a, it's a comfort issue. And, and, you know, we're out at field so much. Like I said, if there's a pop-up rainstorm or something like that, then, yeah, you've got the hood. It can protect you. But, honestly, I just like the feel of them. Yeah. I, I love, you know, I love these things. I could I could live in this and dry fit. <laughs> yeah. I pretty much do, yeah. to be honest with you. So. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, we'll, see what the, we'll see what the folks on the net say today. I'm going to get HD Media. To, to make us some hoodies. We, we'll need, have we need some short sleeve hoodies. What that. is it, the cricket or whatever it is where you, like, paste <laughs> things on? It's like some sort of, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get some HD media. <laughs> we need, like, short sleeve we hoodies need, like, made. a podcast shirt that just has all of our names <laughs> randomly because you don't know who's going to be there on which day. <laughs> and then it's just one of those, the, the blank show with blank, and then there's just all these names you can move around. Just pick we'll a name. We'll, in. Have, we'll have print on the back of it like a tramp stamp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have three tattoos, and none of them are back there. Thank you. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I'm looking for more, though. <clears throat> um, all right. I don't really know how to transition off that, but I'm going to try it. Um, how do you guys feel about the fact that the Jets are going to win the Super Bowl next year? <laughs> how was that? Speaking of crickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, though, what the Jets did in the NFL draft last week was unbelievable. Oh, it was unreal. Did you see the draft that they had? We talked about this Friday. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. When, when I was, I just I'm sorry. I can't when get I was rescuing my dad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't, I, can't, I can't get into the NFL draft. Matter of fact, I, I turned over and watched Florida State and Oklahoma State that night in softball. Yeah, and look, I'm not a great game. I was yeah. not sitting around and watching the draft, but I do look at who went where afterwards. Yeah. And the fact that they, they, their first four picks, you could argue, were four of the, what, 15 best college football players in the country last year? Absolutely. Sauce Gardner, Johnson from Florida State, uh, Garrett Wilson from Ohio State, and then Brees Hall in the second round. And this is a team last year, I don't know how much you – I got – me and Brandon talked about this a lot last year. I got way more into the NFL last year than I've ever been. And I'm not really sure why. I think it's partly because of the playoff system in college football. It just kind of ruins it a little bit. At least in the NFL, it doesn't matter what, what's on the side of your helmet. If you win enough games, you're going to have a chance to win the Super Bowl. Well, you know? And not to look back at the past, but COVID. I mean, it, that too. you were taken out of sports for so long yeah. that you were just itching for anything to come back. Yeah. Like, that's that's how I was. Like, give me – it's almost like when you go on a diet and it's like, all right, the diet's over. I You've really never done that. <laughs> I was waiting on it. I was like, gosh. Those, those <laughs> Oreo like, cookies are looking good. <laughs> the but fat yeah, guy giving the skinny guy hell about never going on a diet. That was fun. <laughs> I weigh more than you do, if I'm not mistaken. Like no, you, you and I have talked about this on a golf course. Yeah, You've lost don't. weight. And now I'm no, sitting at 210. But Okay, see, I got you about 12 pounds. Yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, it's like you, you – when you cut back and you, you can't wait for that first day when you can just – Go out and just consume all that you can consume, and that's how that's how America was last year. I yeah. mean, events that you would have never thought would, you know, be perceived well or, or get good draws. I mean, it, everybody was so looking forward to sports coming back, and I, I feel like some sports kind of missed the boat with it, honestly, yeah. and, and didn't aggressively tackle, you know, what was an opportunity for marketing. And um, you know, NASCAR's their audience has grown substantially because they were the only thing going during COVID yep. at one point and yep. they, they got a lot of fans, but you know, part of this and Grant's done this a lot longer than me. You were, when did you start beat writing for Marshall? Obviously it's not what you're doing right now, but oh, that was goodness. a long, what well, 20? I started with, if you count it, I started as the beat writer for the Parthenon in 04, 05. And then I was there for a couple of years, went to Ashland full time and covered Marshall sports for Ashland. No, I, I was, more high school than Marshall because Marshall isn't a huge uh, draw right. in Ashland. But um, 06 and 07, I was in Ashland. And for then almost 20 years. 2000, 2000, I was secondary on Marshall sports from 2007 to 2010 in Huntington and took over full-time 2011. So I've been doing the WU thing for two years, and well, two football seasons. And one of the things I never realized would happen, I was such a fan of college football nationally five years ago. 
because I was at home on Saturday. And I could turn the channel and be like, hey, here's Penn State and Iowa State. Let's watch that. When you're, especially for me, when I've got to travel five hours just to get to a home game, I don't have time to watch college football. No. The only college football I see is if it's on Thursday or Friday night or if it's a W. That's pretty much it. But the NFL, I would get home on Sunday, as long as the grass was mowed, which was a whole other thing. <laughs> I would get to, you know, just space out and watch football. So I got to actually watch the NFL this last year. And I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. I always thought it was kind of boring, but I really fell into it last year. But the whole reason I said that was – if you all paid attention, I know you did as a Bengals fan. You were you were rocking it. The Jets were good at the end of last year. Yeah. Out of nowhere. They beat the Bengals. Yeah. And and they picked up a couple big wins. Uh, you know, Wilson, the quarterback, looked pretty good. They, I'm not kidding you. The Jets might surprise some people in the next couple years. Really, for the first time in, what, since the Sanchez butt fumble, they have some momentum going. <laughs> I don't know if I would call that momentum. I mean, that was was backwards momentum. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, you look at, and, you know, their last really legit year might have been a Pennington year. I mean, I. I, Well, they made the AFC title game twice with Sanchez. Yeah. Back to back years. That was the whole Bart Scott can't wait year, right? When he gives the famous interview with Sal Palantonio after they beat maybe the Steelers. I can't remember. But yeah, they made back to back. 2010, they played. Indianapolis, okay, in and, the championship, and they made okay. it two years in a row. The, the The butt fumble was one of those games, I think, wasn't it? I don't know. Anyway, it's been a while. We'll yeah. say that, and let's just say that that's been, you could argue, one of the three worst for franchises in the NFL in the last ten years. Them, Detroit, and I don't know, insert team here. I don't know, but definitely those two. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I'll say this: I talked to Vinnie Curry. About a week and a half ago now, at Marshall's uh, Bowlathon that they had during spring game weekend, and that's when he was uh, surprised with the knowledge that he'd be in Marshall Athletics Hall of Fame. Um, he spoke about the Jets organization very highly. He said, you know, because he missed last season, he had signed with them and then missed last season due to a blood disorder and had to have his spleen removed. And pretty scary situation. He said that even though like it happened you know, very soon after he had signed with the Jets and he missed the entire season. He said the Jets organization just was terrific with him and his family keeping up with them and sort of going that extra mile. And that's why he re-signed with them was because he had six teams kind of interested in him. And he said that the fact that the Jets were that loyal, I had to be loyal to them. So, I mean, maybe things are turning around up there. Something to watch next year for sure. You probably get some pretty good betting odds on that. Might have to look that up, see if I can't lose some money today. Jack, you want to give us a couple good minutes on the MEC? Uh, What's going on? Winding down regular season in the baseball and softball MEC. Um, softball. Um, we winded down this past weekend, so their softball conference tournament will take place down in Salem, Virginia. Okay. At a very nice complex down there. I've heard good things about yeah. that place. Yeah. Moyer, Moyer Complex, so that will get started um, next week. And baseball in their final – Next weekend will be the final se- uh, regular season um, series. Uh, UC and State will finish off their regular season. It's always fun. With a four-game uh, series. They'll play two down at the Institute and then turn around. Uh, that'll be on Friday, I believe, this Friday, and then turn around on Sunday and play two at UC. The double dip. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of teams like in the Mountain East Conference do that. Yeah. I know Glenville State and Concord are doing the same thing. They'll play two down at Concord and then two days later – on Sunday, they'll play two at uh, Glenville State. And the reason why I've mentioned those two teams is the South Division. You've got UC, uh, Concord, Glenville State right behind Concord, and then West Virginia State. It's packed in there at two, three, four. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting here this last weekend of baseball. Of course, Concord and uh, UC are playing today. Yeah. Um, Good weather big, today. Yeah, they played um, Saturday. Up at UC, and UC took two of them from them. Okay. And UC's ace, they saved him for today, which is rare. Usually, you see him in the first game. Yeah. And they kind of mixed it up, and so he's on the mound for the uh, game one. He's seven and zero. Ethan Saderna, he's a transfer from Ohio Wesley and a grad student up there. He's a pretty good arm. So they've got two uh, this afternoon with Concord at with the Welch Athletic uh, Complex. So. And then the Mountain East Conference uh, track and field taking place up at Glenville State, which I, I was at the past two days. 
two late and last a half, night. Two yeah, and three quarter days. The uh, <laughs> lightning <laughs> literally stopped everything on the last event. The men's 10K, they were on the starting line, and the guy with the gun was getting ready to fire it off, and they pulled everybody off and sent everybody up to the Waco Center. That's uh, a that's almost as bad. Jack and I were at a remember the regional baseball game last year with two outs in the last inning and it yeah. got rained all. Yeah, so <laughs> that was such a long day. Too. They were there. They finally got that one uh, started at nine fifty five last night. So, so Look, that uh, road weary. I am. Yeah, so, but I'm here. Okay. So yeah, Jack doing a heck of a job over there. Fighting through adversity, right there. Just That's what we do. Up, we power edit through our show with who the hell knows is going to come in the room on this week's podcast. But um, short sleeve hoodies, I, I, and I, I was in Glenville State or in Glenville uh, uh, for the past two days. I never got an autograph from Kim Stevens. I'm kind of disappointed. It's oh, a missed so opportunity. We're gonna have there. to get on. Uh, we we'll have to have her on sometime. Jesse Skiles, the athletic director up there, it's a great guy. He's a former Dupont Panther. Uh, nice. Played up there in the late seventies. Uh, then he went to Glenville State and was up there a long time, uh, track and field coach at uh, Wesley and now back as the AD at Glenville State. Does a great job up there. So, but, yeah, I didn't. I didn't even get any national championship gear. Um, we need something for the room. Yeah, absolutely, a sticker or something. I'm gonna have to holler at him, tell him bring me something yeah, yeah, down to the baseball shirt tournament somewhere or something. So um, the MEC baseball tournament again here, uh, that'll get started later on here in May down at Epling Field in Beckley. So very cool. I guess locally it's prep time, right? Yeah, sure so- is. Sectional softball starts today, and um, say me and this guy to the right, we uh, <laughs> we have two areas that are <laughs> a little bit rich in this sport, and there are some sections this week. I know he's got one, and I've got two over here that are one of them's always wide open and then one suddenly got wide open last week and then he's got the with the midland lincoln county spring like valley battle royale. In yeah crazy. and you know that one to me and it's funny you know a few weeks ago i was talking softball to somebody and i said you know the biggest snake in the grass in state spring valley because people capital midlands are defending champ and they you know they had a really good season and then Lincoln County got a, started getting a lot of head, headlines because they started like 10-0, and 0, and they are really good. I've seen them twice, three, two, three times, and very good team. And Spring, all Spring Valley was doing was just kind of hiding out, beating teams 4-3, 5-2, beat South Charleston, beat Hurricane, you know, picking up these big wins. And then last week I saw them. That's a team capable of doing some damage in this postseason, isn't it? That, that team can beat anybody yeah. at any time. Yeah. Like, they are the biggest – if there is a dark horse, you were talking about odds. Yeah. Like that is a team that you would get terrific odds yep. on because they're in a section with the defending state champ and Lincoln County, whose power is just unbelievable. Unreal. I Actually, mean, just their lineup. They have so much, they have everything. They got speed, they got power, they got kids that hit for average, they've got two good arms. Yeah. And they are, that, you know, if I had to say the most complete AAA team I've seen, it probably is them, like on an average day. But, this just feels like Triple A is more wide open this year than it has been in a long time. Yeah, I mean, talking about Lincoln County, one, three, four, five, and seven hitters can all go yard yep. at any time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I saw it down in Ashland a, a few weeks ago, and they are just so solid. Tommy's really Tommy Barrett's got things going with them, but it, you wonder if the adrenaline for that section is going to be so high. Is there a letdown once whoever advances out of that section? Is there a little bit of – it's hard to emotionally stay on top of your game for the entire postseason. A lot of sections are, you know, one or two teams, and that's it. This is a – if you don't show up and on mm-hmm. Huntington. Yeah, Huntington, and Huntington about almost beat Hurricane out night. last week. Yeah. And Huntington, nobody, like, nobody says anything about that, but – that's the number four team, and in, in a lot of sections, they might be a, a solid number two. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be an absolute war. Looking forward to that at Lincoln County this week. I know we're covering it, and uh, I'll be – So is that whole thing at Lincoln County? Yeah, the whole thing's at Lincoln County starting nice. tomorrow night. And so my week is – I'm going to have to get an oil change before the end of the week because my <laughs> daughter, uh, who plays for Ashland, I've got to go to Wheelersburg, who is one of the top teams, should win a state title in Ohio. So I think it's – Go to Raceland tonight, Raceland, Kentucky, Wheelersburg tomorrow. I'll be at Lincoln or uh, Wheelersburg Wednesday, I think. I'll be at Lincoln County tomorrow night and Thursday, 
and then they go to Lawrence County, Kentucky this week too, and then Bath County for uh, two. So yeah, I'm gonna put some miles on the old, old girl this week, but. Uh, a lot of fun. Like I said, I mean, th- this is a time of year that we all live for. The weather is improving. Yeah. Knock on wood. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I know your all's weekend wasn't great, but um, <laughs> it, it's going to be a lot of fun watching the West Virginia postseason yeah. sort of fall out. And we've put a lot of hours into our scheduling. You and yeah. I have talked about that whenever you weren't having some of the craziest stuff ever happen. We were talking schedules and. Probably put in about, uh, I would say, a solid 15 to 18 hours this week just trying to figure out schedules to, you know, yeah. make sure that we've got everything covered while he goes fishing. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, that's the thing, and he'll tell you, other than maybe the amateur, this is, like, my favorite week of the yeah. year because this is, yeah, well, it's great. It's basketball state tournaments too. But um, this is – and, like, he's he's got one of these, and there's two more of them over here. And but real quick, I do want to touch on the fact that while we're in Hurricane, they're pretty good too. They're one yeah. seed, and they're going to – They've got the inside track to get whoever comes out of that section of death that he's talking about. Yeah. So they got to take care of Ripley, Parkersburg, and Parkersburg South first. And in this sport, there is no gimme. So, right. But over toward this way, you know, the one obvious one is the AA Region 4 Section 2 where you've got Winfield, Nitro, and Sissonville. Not only them, but Point Pleasant, who if there's a school that has owned another school in any sport, more weirdly than Point Pleasant has taken out Winfield in the last 10 years in softball. I don't know what it is. It's the most conf- dumbfounding thing I've ever seen. It's a mental block. <laughs> and Point's really good, and they've had really good teams. But there are times Winfield, what people don't realize, the first title that Hoover won in 17, Winfield had the best team in the state, period. The end. Cartney and Emily's senior year, they were the best. I saw them go to Hoover and sweep Hoover. I saw them beat Chapmanville that year. They were the best team in the state. And Point Pleasant comes down and just knocks them off two out of three and says thanks for the sectional title. Yep. And that's happened so many times. And Winfield's a three seed. Kennedy Dean's hitting five eighty. This is the best hitter in our in our area this year. There's a kid from St. Albans. I'll get to him in a second. It's close. Five eighty eight home runs. I mean, going to Youngstown State, she plays shortstop and catcher. This kid's a good player. And the well, last two years in this in this section, the three seed won it last year, and the four seed won it in 2019, and they went to the state tournament. So you're the four seed in your section, and you get to the state tournament. That's the kind of section we're talking about. So and don't forget about Poca because Poca <laughs> Poca took Poca took everybody to the wire. Nitro and like in both the ten innings. So and yeah. they're the five seed. Yeah. yeah, and they have one senior and two <laughs> juniors. Um, Nitro six and a, and I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Lena Elkins is posting Delaney Buckner numbers. It's crazy, her numbers right now, and making one hell of a statement toward possible awards later this year. I mean, she's pitched every inning but one. She's averaging 2.2 strikeouts an inning. She's walked like 23. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, she's hit five home runs. This kid, I mean, I hope people <laughs> appreciate what she's done this year because I'm going to watch her strike out 19 hurricane hitters. And I had a, an area coach who's coached a while that I'll tell you off off air told me, and they've been around for 20 years, that she right now is the best pitcher he, his teams have ever faced. That includes Andy Williamson, that includes Allie Burdett, that includes Delaney Buckner, that includes everybody. Now, I'm not saying that. That's what I was told. So if you get a chance to see her, <laughs> make it out to see her because that's good. And then, oh, by the way, there's just Sissonville who did it all last year. So. Good luck trying to come out of that one. And then, of course, the other one. You know, St. Albans with the returning state player of the year, Taven Stevenson, who committed to Kentucky when she was 12, I think, 13. She's back. And I think, you know, they lost six seniors, but they start out 15-1 and one or whatever, and everyone's thinking, well, you know, South Charleston's having a decent year, but it's probably St. Albans. And all of a sudden, St. Albans has lost three out of four, and they got beat by GW last week, who's 11-11. And, oh, by the way, Stevenson pitched that game. So... GW, South Charleston, and, and St. Albans suddenly looks like a lot more fun over there in Region 3 than, than we thought it was going to be. So that's going to be one to keep track of if you're around this area for sure, too. If, if we're talking right now, I think South Charleston's a favorite, man. I, I hate to go against it like because they, they have put together some performances. When they need to get pitching, they've been able to get pitching. When they've needed to get bats going, they've gotten bats going. And so it, it's going to be really interesting because there is a little bit – I don't want to call it a misfire because St. Albans is so talented. Like they, I mean, they are. They're a talented team. But sometimes it just 
doesn't click at the right times. And that's sort of what seems like is going on at St. Albans right now. They could easily get it going and postseason turn it up. But South Charleston has been the most consistent out of that section. Well, here, here's the interesting part. Heading into this section, St. Albans is one and three in their last four. South Charleston's three and five in the last eight. Mm-hmm. GW seven and one in their last eight. It's crazy. GW has not been talked about all year long. Not ever. Not once. And <laughs> I mean, Ana Jimenez, who's their ace, is good. Now, she's not striking out 280 like Lena Elkins. She needs some help from their defense. The biggest difference with them is they have been a lot better fielding the last five to seven games than they were early. If they can field the ball, they have bats. They've got a good pitcher. They can beat anybody. Um, But South Charleston... Their only thing is they've been in a horrendous hitting slump as of late. Now, they this has coincided with them seeing good pitching. The first part of their schedule wasn't wasn't great. The second half has been really tough. So, have they seen enough good pitching now to flip the switch and get hits when they need to? It almost seems like they're due. I really like that team a lot. They have yep. two pitchers that are both effective. I don't know how that one shakes out, man. It, it's going to be awfully fun to watch, but I'll be watching from – Beach chair, so you guys have, you know, Can we, let me know how it goes. I, I'm going with St. Albans because Michaela Wall is in the dugout over there. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you talk about getting old. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was crazy. down there watching St. Albans and Hurricane with you, and I look over and I'm like, man, she looks familiar. <laughs> it's Michaela Wall that played in Cabell Midland. I'm like, wait, what? She's coaching? You, and, and that's the thing, uh, all year long, like, I have conversations with other sports writers who cover press sports and they're like who's going to win triple A? now first of all i've heard washington's really good and this screams to me of a year where someone from the north finally comes down here and just does it i think oak glenn and double a is really good too but you just keep looking at stevenson I, I know that they've lost and i know she's gotten beat a couple times she was a state player of the year last year she should be the best pitcher in the state of west virginia she's an absolute ace she's the best pitcher in that region and usually when, when worse comes to worse, I want that kid. I, I want the kid that's going to go out and strike out 15 in seven innings. I want to take my chances with that. So can she be that kid? Like, where is where is this at? So You mentioned Washington. And Washington was seeing them in Charleston last year covering Cabell Midland's run. They were two or three plays away from yeah. really making noise. I mean, they, yeah. they took on Cabell Midland. They took on St. Albans. And even though – you know, they ended up falling. It was it was a dogfight, and they were a terrific team. And, and they, knocked, if I remember, they only had one senior on that team last year. They've been knocking on this door for a while. I mean, back yeah. to Katie Adams' days, Washington would show up at the state tournament. And back then, the gap was this. And it's, you've seen it do this every year. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, people forget Oak Glenn was in the driver's seat in double-A. Hunter Hoover had to beat him twice in a row, and they had a 5-0 lead in the fifth inning of the second game. Yeah. They didn't close the door just that quick. So... I think what's cool is watching the North slowly catching up. You can see it. And there's more and more teams that get down here now that are able to hold their own. The, the North-South game, the, the North, North won the game, series yeah. last year for like the first time in 15 years. So the sport's still growing, and that's and that's that's really cool to see. And you're going to see some good stuff this week. So you going to any? Going to any? Or are you going to be? Uh, now that I'm not showing up with seed, you're just going to stick around now. I have no idea. Okay. Oh, well, you know what day it is sometimes. <laughs> It's Monday. It's it's the start of sectional day, and I think we've got five games today, and about Four. nine or ten tomorrow. And forecast not looking great. Though. Not for tomorrow. Yeah, that's why I, this week's schedule. I was I was joking around with Nick Scala and uh, talking to him last night about our schedules and photo assignments and things like that. I was like, you know that, you know I've put all this into this week just for Tuesday to be a complete wash, and then we've got to scrap it and do it all over. But. Uh, hopefully, you know, we, we get some games in because, like you said, there's some terrific, terrific softball postseason action coming up. And, oh, by the way, the MSAC baseball tournament's at Appy Power Park uh, yeah. tonight and tomorrow, too. So that should be a lot of fun. Oh, by the way, one more. Man, Sherman, and Buffalo in the same section, they're oh. all three and three against each other. Yeah. that They're the top three seeds. Seeing, seeing <laughs> that man was a uh, – I think a three seed in that section. And by the way, they might like, they wow. have one of the two or to three best pitchers I've seen all year, regardless of class. Morgan Cooper's unbelievable. Yeah. 
So definitely check that one out too. A lot of fun and all of them are HD media properties. And so, you know, there's papers there and and we're going to, we're going to have it covered throughout the postseason. So look forward to, to writing plenty of feature stories and, and talking some of this on here with you all some more. Yeah, it's I should have mentioned from the top that Grant's my boss now, so he gets to coordinate no. all this. See, he loves it when I do that. The quarterback. I'm not a boss. I'm a teammate. <laughs> it's, that's how we rock. <laughs> Bosses wear suits and, and speak eloquently. I'm sitting there in a short sleeve hoodie and, and <laughs> getting ready. I think you didn't food. bring the drinks. Oh, that's true. See, because he, hey. he makes the money. <laughs> Quarterbacks. That's what we do. Take care of your he makes we take all the money. We, we take, I, would, I wasn't going to say offensive linemen. But. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I need, like, for a pod in a week, I need you in a short sleeve hoodie and shorter Royce. I've got I'm it. telling you, that that outfit I don't right have there. Royce. That outfit right there would go in, like, a GQ magazine somewhere. That, uh, that may be something for the uh, <laughs> state softball tournament. Oh, my God. It would <laughs> show up in that. We'll get our photographers to take some some candidates of you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Well, anything else we want to throw? Um, Thanks to Video Productions, to HD Media. Probably should have done this twice. What a rookie move. Um, You're still learning. Yeah. Uh, Thanks to Snap Fitness, Generations Physical Therapy. Got Um, that right. All right. See, (laughs) still, I'm three for three on that going back to last week. Yeah. Um, can find us on Spotify. Can find us on what Apple, Apple, Google, Apple, Google, Google yep. YouTube yet? Yep. Yeah, we're on YouTube. HD Media's YouTube. We'll be tweeting uh, video we'll be, productions. We'll of be course, Facebooking. on Facebook. Yep, and we'll be throwing a poll out today about the short sleeve hoodie. I just want to know, just for my own curiosity. <laughs> I, I use you guys to learn. So, and uh, again, check out um, HD Media all week for all your sports yep. concerns. But really going to bring you some softball stuff this week it's going to be good right yeah we're going to be softball heavy and obviously uh stay tuned to our website too we're, yeah. we're gonna you know we're moving into that digital phase uh jumping in with both feet obviously uh jack and video productions have been great to work yeah. with as well so we you know we want to do this thing right and we're going to amp this thing up uh as soon as spring sports sort of die down we're all going to meet and brainstorm and and then There's we'll go a right lot. into the VGA season. That's exactly. <laughs> we might stream golf this summer. Who oh knows? God. Not Pritt's golf. That's what we need to do. We need to get Pritt with the Comedy WGA hour. guys and just stream them golfing because yeah. that is worth I the price. I just want to note that after one hole last year at the West Virginia Amateur, I would have had the lead. He would have. He eagled. I was, the only, I was the only player in the house to eagle hole one that day. No, how how'd the rest of that round go though? <laughs> oh my gosh. Might have been I, the best I've ever I golfed. Two, I was two <laughs> under I think it was two under through one and five over through three. That's how good I, it was. I was feeling really good because I parred one on the Meadows course with the pins in tournament placement. And he eagles the thing and I'm like, I'm already two shots down and then I proceeded to, yeah, it to was golf a, one of the better rounds I've ever it golfed. Was a so. Stomping, so But yeah, it, you know, like I said, the digital the digital aspect of H D media is something that we're gonna grow much like what Marshall is looking to expand, and I've talked about that. We are too. And so, uh, you know, feel free to email us, contact us with any ideas. We can basically do anything with this bad boy, and we're going to do it. Uh, yeah. It's going to be an exciting future for HD media, not just from a print perspective, but but how we augment that too and, and sort of uh, expand the digital phase. Yeah, and I can speak for Brandon saying we're glad to be a part of all this, man. I mean, there was a new wave of energy that came when Jack jumped on board and all of this came on, so he helps us tremendously. This thing looks awesome because of him, obviously. If we can find a way to just like mask our faces out, just blur face, that would probably be better. No offense, Brandon, we you miss do a good you, buddy. job with that ugly hat on. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, like I said, I'm you in got a, two Cincinnati Reds guys in here today. The uh, hat, that hat looks like it's it's seen I some years, in, but that might be the last winning season they had, so it might be. Special. I am in a pirate strike. I do not buy merch. I do not buy tickets until Bob Nutting sells a team. This is the last hat I'll own, and I'm going to wear it. So Jack knows where I'm coming from. I'm a Reds fan. <laughs> yeah. Literally, oh, did, yeah, two games into the season, I'm done. Every I podcast asks Jack for a Reds update. You want to give us one? Um, not today. Okay. <laughs> Not today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> All right. Well, that should about do it for us. Thanks to Grant for coming in and filling in Brandon's shoes. We miss you, buddy. Godspeed. Hope you're okay. Jack, appreciate it as always, man. Always fun to hang out with you. Thanks and, to Katie um, Adams. Thanks to, yeah. <laughs> thanks to thanks to Katie for thanks to Katie for taking a beating from Ryan for about twenty <laughs> about minutes. Like, she's so good at interviews now, and I'm taking all the credit for there that because I made her do them for so long. So, um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I got to get Cartney Schoolcraft in here. Cartney loved, yeah, she loved to see me about it, but she was a lot more polite about it than Mathis. Mathis would just look at me, I don't want to. Cartney would laugh, man. Are you going to make me talk? I'm like, yeah. So it got to the point where Mathis wouldn't know I was interviewing her. I'd ha- I'd hide the micro 
her <laughs> underneath my sleeve and just we would have a conversation and then she'd be like so are you going to interview me? I was like, I just did, and she'd yeah. get mad and walk off. Yeah. So. See you, big country. <laughs> we'll see her this summer as Katie Mathis takes on Ryan Pritt in a home run derby. Yep. That's happening. So, anyway, let's, let's jump off here, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks, right. Video Productions, HD Media. We'll see you next, well, Friday. Sorry. Yep. See you.